Julia Child, welcome to my house. What fun we're going to have baking all kinds of incredible cakes, pies, and breads right here in my own kitchen. Are you fed up with stale, tough, dry bagels? Let New York's Lauren Groveman show you how to make and bake the best and freshest bagels you've ever dreamed of eating. And you can do them right in your own home kitchen. Join us on Baking with Julia. Look at this beautiful bagel. It's warm. It was just baked this morning. And look at that inside there. It's just absolutely delicious. It starts softly chewy. And Lauren Groveman is going to show us how to turn our kitchens into a bagel factory. That's right. Good. And the best thing about this recipe is that it you know, teaches you how to have fresh bagels first thing in the morning, which is... Great. Right. Every day. Best. Every day. Good. Okay, let's assemble our dough. The first thing I'm going to do is dissolve my one packet of yeast in one quarter cup of nice, you know, warm water. Yeah. You don't need a thermometer or if anything If it's like too that. hot, It kills die. the yeast, but you know, you don't need a thermometer. I'm giving it a pinch of sugar, which is yeast's favorite food. Good. Okay, so I'm going to let that get nice and happy over there. Good. Now I need my mixing bowl. And here I have two cups of, again, warm water. Any kind of uh, liquid that you put into a yeast dough needs to be about the same temperature. Yeah, nice and tepid. body temperature. Yeah, yeah, nice and happy, mm -hmm. like you want to swim in it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put three tablespoons of vegetable shortening, which helps to give my bagels the texture a nice bounce. That was why it was had to have such yeah. a lovely, softly chewy. I'm glad you love yes. them. That well, makes me happy. I don't like bagels, but I just adore these. Okay, I'm going to put into this bowl right now just one tablespoon of salt. And I need one tablespoon of sugar. That's again for the yeast. Yep, and flavor and coloring, helping it brown. Mm, yeah. Now I'm going to use one tablespoon of liquid barley malt, which is, no. is very um, nutritious. I never have heard of that. Is it? If it, you don't have it, can you leave it out? You can. You use two tablespoons of sugar, but it's in health food stores. It's very healthy. It's from germinated barley, mm -hmm. and it also helps to give the dough a nice um, chewy texture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm just going to stir that up here to get it all. Mushed up. The yeast is not quite ready yet. It's not. It's not mm. happy yet. It's getting happy. I'm going to add some freshly ground black pepper. Oh, in the in the dough. That's yes. interesting. But you don't have to. You can. Oh. You can leave it out. Well, it's up to you. Well, if you put it in, then it should be. You're good. the boss. Okay. Now, I'm going to. It's it's pretty happy. Mm -hmm. It's pretty creamy. It's going to go right in there. Okay. Now. I'm stirring in flour one cup at a time. Actually, you know something, Julia? I'm putting the flour over here. Okay. It's more comfortable for me. When it's totally liquid, you can stir in two cups at a time. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be precise about measuring it. No, 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 no. You, no. Your hands, first of all, the dough will take a different amount of flour every time you make it, depending mm -hmm. on weather conditions, depending on the flour, the amount mm -hmm. of moisture in your yeah. flour. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a glutinous network. This is super gluten flour, which is bromated, which means it's treated with oh. potassium bromate. Mm -hmm. So it gives the dough a, a tougher texture, yeah. more bagel-like. And it's very tasty, more too. Yes, more yeah. bagel-like. OK, so it's not just like you know bread, like white bread. Yeah. OK, now what I'm doing here is I'm just going to stir this. I'm creating a real elastic texture here. Mm -hmm. And once this dough leaves the sides of the bowl, I get it out. I never put my hand into my canister. I always work from a scoop, mm -hmm. just like that. Now it's almost ready to get turned out. Now I make a nice flowered bed. And okay, do you ever use a machine? Nope. But you could, I suppose. Sure you could. Yeah. But, I, but you I, like it by I hand. Do. Yeah. do you know something? It's a sport to me. When I do it by hand, it feels more like a sport. Yeah. My whole body's involved. I feel mm -hmm. like I get a it's workout. It's good exercise. Yeah, so I can eat more. <laughs> right? Eat more bagels. Right. Okay, let's get rid of it. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to scrape off my spoon, and we're going to knead this dough. Okay. Okay. I'm right-handed. This is my best buddy during this, because yeah. this now the dough is very sticky. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in order for the dough not to stick to me, I have to use my scraper. That has a lovely soft texture, Oh, it's it? wonderful. But you see, once it gets sticky, you just use your pastry scraper, mm -hmm. lift it up, flour your surface, and go. You flour your hands. You don't flour your hands over the dough, but to the side of the dough. Mm -hmm. okay. now, that's, that's really it's beautiful the way 
Like that, that has a lot, and it, as soon as you hold on to it, it's sticky, yeah. It's sticky it has now, a but lovely it won't quality. Be. It yeah. won't be. I'm going to make this nice and glutinous. Now, I'm just going to do this for a little while until it becomes nice and smooth and elastic. I'd like to give it a little... Go for it. That. It's just going to rough, and I can yeah. feel it then. Yes, I see. That has a lovely feel to it. Like a baby. Thank you. Oh, any time. My pleasure. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how you can, how you check the texture, because that's very important. And every yeast dough that you make will check slightly differently, depending mm -hmm. on the interior. This dough is actually very easy to check because it's so elastic. There's nothing to get in the way of building texture. OK. See when I push? And I let go. Mm -hmm. That's the development of elasticity. Mm -hmm. Okay, that means it's ready. I go like this, and it fills up. I push it, and it comes back. That's ready. You see that? Now I'm going to need it just one more second. And if you would do something for me, Julie, if you would just butter that rising bowl over there, okay. the stainless steel one. Thanks. <laughs> Not that it has to be stainless steel. What we need here is a bowl that will allow this dough to at least double in bulk. Now we're going to rise the dough when we do this for anywhere from an hour to two and a half hours, depending on how light textured you want your bagel to be. But then it gets refrigerated. Come <laughs> on. Okay, you want to butter the top? We'll put some butter on fine. And the reason for the butter is just because it tastes so good. And also, I guess it prevents things from sticking. Yes. And we're also going to grease the little bit of the wrap. And that's just in case the wrap should touch. Mm -hmm. We know that it won't tear, yeah. but we have to uncover it to go and punch our dough down and then to refrigerate it and then to shape it. Okay. I'm going to put a towel over my bowl. Keeping it warm. Keeping it nice and snug as a bug in a rug. And I yeah. want to tell, you know, things go on in your kitchen. You don't know what time it is. Yeah. This is, I want a one hour rise. So yeah. I'm going to time this bagels punch down and I'm going to Put this tag right on top of my bowl so, then you're so that no matter what sensible. my kids do and get me all upset, I can remember to punch my dough down. Fine. Okay. And that's after about an hour. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you what this dough well, looks like. Remember grown. how small it yes. was? Yes. Okay. And it sticks a little bit. The whole point of not sticking is so that you don't, you know, tear texture that you've very mm -hmm. carefully built. Yeah. Okay. So now I want you to. Give that one one, give it a one two. Pong! Like that. Like that. <laughs> okay. It's still very soft. Yes, it's very soft, and, and, and I'm going to divide this dough. This dough makes 10 large bagels. Uh huh. So if I, don't, if I have a family of five and I want to eat fresh bagels, I can divide the dough right now. Mm -hmm separately, and I can put one half into kind of one of those bowls. That one's already buttered. Right, one grease bowl, and the other one is going to go into another grease bowl, just like that. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get covered and refrigerated for up to four hours or overnight or up to two days. Can so, you freeze the dough? You can. Um, I, w I personally don't really like to, not, especially not for more than two weeks, because then the yeast becomes a little alcoholish and mm -hmm. it affects flavor. Yeah. So this way, we can have fresh bagels tomorrow morning and the next day or the next day. Okay? That's all right with so me. So these are going to sleep now in the refrigerator. Uh -huh. So we're ready to make bagels. Now before we make bagels, there's certain things that have to take place. You have to have a pot of water boiling, because we boil bagels before we bake there them. There we are, boiling water. Yes, yeah, so we have boiling water, and the oven is preheated to 500 degrees yep. for at least 30 minutes. And they're, they're lined with uh, quarry tiles to get a nice, In other words, crisp Get crust. ready yes. before you do it. Thank you. OK. Now, this is for five bagels. And that's still very soft. Nice and soft, yeah. I'm going to divide this into five. And you know, they won't be all perfectly even, but they're Almost. homemade. Yes. You know? No. Okay, now I'm going to want to cover them. The dough has a lovely yeasty smell to it. I love this. Okay, I'm going to cover them while we work with them so that they don't develop a skin. Now I'm mm -hmm. going to give you a piece too, because I want you to work. Okay. Now, 
it's a little on the sticky side, so you want to use the flour. Okay, mm -hmm. now this is what I want you to do. We're going to just pinch. We're going, what I'm doing here is I'm calling on all that elastic stuff that I much, built. It's very much like forming little rolls, Absolutely. Isn't it? Now, you make it nice and pinched on one end. It's nice and smooth on the other. It's absolutely like, like this is what I, the way I do my French rolls. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want to do is I flour the bottom and I turn it pinched side down and I flatten a little bit. Okay? Take my finger, go right through. So you can feel it on the yes. other side. Now, this is the important oh. part. We want to make the hole disproportionately large so it looks silly. It looks like a silly looking bagel. And the reason for that, and you have to use your flour, don't be afraid to flour, because if it's too appropriate looking, what happens is the, the bands of elasticity, this is so elastic, no. that the hole will close up. And so look how silly that looks. No. See? We'd but, never think that was going to turn into a bagel. Oh, actually, let's flour well, is our that, Is this a one bit. all right? That's beautiful. And you just put it down, just like that. And it looks silly, but what happens is well, when so you... It's already shrinking in, isn't right. it? So here's, there's another one. So because otherwise what will happen is if you don't do it, you'll end up having cute little buns with no holes. They'll be delicious, yeah. but they won't be a bagel. Now what you got here? This is my egg white glaze, which will allow a nice shiny finish to mm -hmm. my bagels and um, will allow will act like glue for my seeds. Now, now I'm why, do you, why do you strain it? It removes the gelatinous, clumsy quality of uh -huh. egg white. It makes mm -hmm. it easier to apply with a pastry brush. Okay, I now see. I'm going to go boil these bagels. Okay. Now, before I do, I'm going to make the water a little sweet, which is good for browning. Oh. And I'm going to add a pinch a of baking soda. Of yeah, a quarter of a cup. I'm going to add, a, I'd say, about a teaspoon of baking soda. It also helps with browning. Uh -huh. Now, I'm just going to lower these bagels in. Now, you want a wide pot as opposed to a tall, narrow one, because these need to sit freely in the water. No. If this was a great big pot, you could put more in, but this mm -hmm. is, see it goes down and then it comes up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use a skimmer. And you let they this grow. They look awfully funny, kind of they wrinkled. Are funny, no, they look funny, but you know, they should be really rapidly boiling. Mm -hmm. And we're going to leave them this way for a minute and a half. Meanwhile, while these are boiling, let's just take care of our peel. Actually, I flavor my peel, I mean, flavor the bottom of my bagels because I don't like that the bottoms don't have anything on them. So I have, this is medium brown cornmeal. Mm -hmm. These are just, you know, nice raw sesame seeds. Well, that's a good idea, because they're going to sit on there. Yeah, and I put some poppy, poppy seeds. seeds. Well, that's a good idea. And some caraway seeds. Mm. Now, you can use all of these, you can use none of them, but you must have the cornmeal, otherwise your bagels will stick, and you'll be very sad. Turning them over. Turning them over. No, they need about another about minute. About a minute, minute and a half. Okay, so we're going to get these out. And we're going to top them. Actually, if you would like to just brush those with the glaze, it helps to give them a nice, nice shiny finish. And then we're going to top them. Wow. Was it about two minutes before you took them, before they swelled up? Like, uh-huh. I guess you just boil them until they really swell double yeah. like this. Right. They float, they, they sink, mm -hmm. and then they float, and then they and get then, nice and puffy. And then they puff. Like a dumpling. Yes. Okay. Now, right. I'm just going to glaze that, and then we're going to top them. All right. Let's leave, let's say, two of them plain. All right. And so we're going to give you some sesame, mm -hmm. and I'll do poppy, and you do sesame, and then let's do a flavor all, where we taste everything in every bite. Okay. Yeah, there's one sesame. Okay, and then we'll do that one to flavor all, and those two will leave plain. All right. So we're ready to rock and roll. Good. Now, I want steam in my oven. So mm -hmm. I have a quarter of a cup of ice water that I'm going to throw underneath the tiles. Under the so if you tile. want to just open the oven for And me. look, at there are those tiles, red yeah, hot. That's right. Now, we're going to go under the, under the tiles here, not on top of them. There they go. Close the door. Now that's at 500 degrees. We're going to reduce the temperature to 450 and bake for 25 minutes. Okay. So now that the bagels have baked for 25 minutes and they're nice and golden brown, I've let them sit in a turned off oven for five minutes. And now I'm going to open the door and let them sit five more minutes with the, the oven turned door. off. Yeah. They look lovely. They're ready. Isn't that beautiful? Aren't they, they gorgeous? Puff. I've never seen bagels that have puffed this much. 
they're chubby. Obviously, I've never eaten real bagels before. That's wow. the love in them, Julia. Beautiful. I think it must be. It is. But you don't want to eat these right away because when something comes from the oven, you really have to look at the cooling process as part of the cooking process. Mm -hmm. Because raw, you know, hot, hot dough is no. not good for your How tummy. How long should they weigh about? I'd say at least 20 minutes. 20 at minutes. least 20 and minutes. Then for we're this. ready to eat them. Yeah, go yeah. for it. So, here are my beautiful bagels. And they are absolutely Aren't they gorgeous? beautiful. But you That's need so to fresh. put something on them. Yes. So well. I'm going to share some of my favorite spreads with you. Okay. Very easy, all do ahead. Like two days ahead you can do that. We'll do this one first. Okay. This mm -hmm. is a vegetable cream cheese. Very simple. I just have 12 ounces of whipped cream cheese that's softened. Whipped? I mean, do, like, do you buy it whipped? Or it is, it's whipped cream cheese. You can really use any cream cheese you want, but I happen oh. to like it whipped. So that's why I start okay. with it whipped. But it's 12 ounces. I'm putting in grated carrots. And... Those are radishes. Oh, radishes. And these are scallions. Very finely done scallions. And these are cucumbers. Mm -hmm. And you know, a good idea is when you chop the cucumbers to squeeze them in a towel to get some of the excess liquid Ooh, out. Otherwise, they, they kind of break it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that'll be for garnish. And that's, that, I mean, that's it. Well, that's easy. You can't have it easier than that, Julia. No. But this can be done two days ahead no. and left in the refrigerator. Does, uh, does it need salt little, and yeah. pepper, too? It doesn't really need salt. So I'm just going to put some pepper in. doesn't need salt. No, okay. I don't think so. And I'm going to just put it in this bowl right here. And you can make That's, it. It's pretty, too, isn't it? It is pretty. It's colorful. It's textural. Mm -hmm. And you can use any vegetables you want. I mean, you don't okay, have to use yeah. mine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you just smooth out the top. Over there, I have smoked salmon and scallion spread. Mm, is the again, salmon all chopped up? All chopped up. And again, yeah. chopped scallions. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a little bit of scallions on the top of this. Mm. Okay. Oh, what's this brown stuff? Well, that's my favorite. That's oh, my is. chopped chicken liver. Oh, are we going to do that? Yes, we're going to do that right now. Great. Okie dokie. So, I have a, a big skillet, and I'm going to use two tablespoons of rendered chicken fat. With that chopped garlic in there. Yeah, the chopped garlic and two large, two large onions. onions, two large big fat Spanish onions, the big ones. Okay, and we're going to caramelize them. That means cooking them until they're nice and brown. Right. That's a beautiful color. They certainly reduced mm -hmm. in quantity, yeah, haven't they? Good. Now what I'm going to do is push them to the side, but I'm going to cook my chicken liver right in here. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to add butter to this. Now, this is not kosher chicken liver. I'm not kosher. Mm -hmm. So a person who was would just, not do that. You just, just keep on with add the chicken Add more chicken fat. fat. But yeah. I happen to like the taste, the richness of butter. Mm -hmm. So do I. So now I'm going to... <laughs> What's well, a little more butter, right? Okay, I'm going to add more of these chicken livers right Lovely to the fresh center. fresh chicken livers. They're beautiful. Yeah. These are gorgeous. We're just going to sear them on each side. Mm -hmm. Over high, I'd like them to get even browner than that. So I'm putting that back on the other side. What's happening is it's going to caramelize mm -hmm. on the bottom. Yeah. So we'll just wait a second or two until it happens. So now they're seared on both sides, mm -hmm. and I want to just steam them through. Mm, they smell good. And I'm going to cover them and turn the heat low. Mm -hmm. to to help them cook through. I don't want them to be too dark. You want them to no. retain a how little pink. How long will that take? A minute. A minute or two. A minute or two. That's it. You think they're done now? I think so. Let's take a look. Ah, oh, they're fine. gorgeous. Now I'm going to take my spatula and just, just to get all that yummy stuff from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to raise the heat again. Yeah. Just to caramelize it just a little bit more, mm -hmm. let me just cut into one. Ooh, I think that's well, nice, don't you think? I think that's done. Turn it off. Okay, I just need my pot holder. Now well, you're going to put it in the Right into the processor. paper, and can go in hot. Doesn't matter. Hot. And notice I haven't seasoned it yet. It doesn't matter. I'm going to season it, I'm going to season season it in, in, in there. Okay. All of it. I want all of that butter. I want all of every single thing that's in this skillet. I want it in my food processor. Every bit. That has 
all that nice flavor. Okay, now I'm gonna put three hard boiled eggs in here. And now chopped chicken liver is a little bit like eating mashed potatoes. It's gotta be very well seasoned. Mm -hmm. Don't be stingy with the coarse salt. You know, when you, you taste something like this, when it's hot, it might seem a little overly seasoned, mm -hmm. but once it's chilled, it you dulls the flavor. You need over seasoning mm -hmm. yes. a little bit, don't you? Yes. Now I'm going to process this. Now we don't want to make mush. No. Also, you want to chop it? Pulse. Pulse. It's nice to see little flecks of egg white. Mm -hmm. I'm open it up. I'm going to add a little bit more salt. And maybe a little pepper. It. We're going to taste it. And you have to go too. Where's yours? I'll take that little pepper. Oh, that's really good. Sweet. Need a little mm. more salt. I'm very, that's delicious. Isn't that yum? What's those onions that give the sweetness? Yum, mm. yum. Okay. Mm. do at this point, scrape it out into a bowl, mm -hmm. like this one, mm -hmm. so then you could take like a nice decorating comb and use, you know, just to, to comb the top, you could well, use, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, but you don't, if you don't have one, use a, a serrated knife mm -hmm. or a fork, mm -hmm. and now you have a choice here, you can garnish, a traditional garnish is minced onion that goes around the border, mm -hmm. but I'm going to use more caramelized onions because I love them so much. Mm -hmm. I now, think that's much prettier. I do too. There's something you should know though. When you're doing the caramelized onions for the border here, you don't want to use butter. You want to use an oil. Because well, the butter will congeal. Yes. You know. And it changes the texture and the look of the and onions. Chicken fat wouldn't work so well no, either. No, it's very much like butter. It's like a nice butter. canola oil yeah, or something. A nice like that. vegetable oil. So now I'm just going to garnish the top with by crushing a little bit of so coarse salt between mm -hmm. my fingers. And Add a little bit of freshly ground black pepper, and that's it. And that's ready to serve. Yes, it is. You think we should dig in? I want to. I want to. Which okay. one do you want? Well, I like that one. I like think. sesame. Okie dokie. I've been waiting so really all day for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. I know. We've most... been very patient. Ah. Well, that's lovely, isn't, isn't it? Isn't that nice? No. Now, which one? I'm going to give a little you... of the salmon. Oh, I think. Does. Okay. Well, what are you going to have? I'm going to have, I think I'm going to have this, well, I'll let you try that first. I'm going to go into my chopped chicken liver because, well, I have a knife here. Mm. That's what I want. This you makes know, me happy. I've never liked bagels until today. Because they happy. always were so kind of dry. Lauren, thanks so much. I'm going to turn into a bagel factory, Ooh. too. And I just love knowing how to make these. Thank, Thank you, you. For you. Thank you. Bon appétit